All right, so solving partial fractions is all done. I think we are good, but now we want to talk about a shortcut that's called the cover-up rule. Now, what is the cover-up rule? As the term implies, you need to cover up something. Okay? The idea behind this is actually not too difficult to understand. So try our best to understand. All right? Uh, I already show you how it works, right? How it looks like. Uh. So, so maybe I show you one more time. Okay? So for example, like this one. All right? If I want to do a partial fraction, I will, uh, I will have to do the split first. Am I right? So it becomes a over x minus 1 plus b over uh, x minus 2. Let me go through the steps of what I am doing first. So in order to find a, the first thing you do, you pay attention to the denominator of a. And you try to make this into 0. How to make this a 0? You put in x equal to 1. So you're going to tell people, you know what, I'm going to substitute x equal to 1. Then, what is going to happen is you pay attention to the left-hand side. Don't even care about b or whatever. Don't care. Just look at this. Okay? Your a somehow will magically be x equal to 1, right? 1. x equal to 1, right? 1 minus 2. Now, this one is the problematic one because if x is minus 1, oh, sorry, if x is 1, then you have 1 minus 1, you get 0. We cannot have a denominator to be 0, correct? So, this is the offensive thing and we're going to cover it up. Pretend that it doesn't exist. Okay? Maybe that's why the name called cover up rule. We really just cover up that part. And guess what? You got an A. Done. Okay? So that's the magical effect of it. Now, now how do we do B? Okay? So if you think about B, uh, wait, now I have to up. Okay. So, uh, how do I do B? Well, if you look at B, it, it repeat the same steps. Look at the denominator. You're going to put in x equal to 2. All right? Uh, you're going to put it on the left side again. So B is equal to 2 over 2 minus 1, which is 1. This one, cover it. You get B equal to 2. Done. Okay, so this is how it looks like when you are applying or you are using it called the cover rule. Now let's talk about how it works, all right? Because the rules that comes with it a lot depends on what you understand about it. Okay, uh, a lot of school teachers don't teach this. I don't know why. I suspect it's because uh, it sometimes it doesn't work for some particular cases, which is what you want to know. Okay, so pay attention to this. Right? So it's basically the same thing. If you were to do it normally, this is what you do. You split first, step one. You flatten it, step two. And then you try to find A, find B, correct? Like the normal way that you know. Now, if you look at this, think about it. If you want to find A, how do you do that? Well, you make B disappear. How do you make B disappear? You substitute X equal to one. Okay? So you substitute X equal to one, the B will be gone. All right, so if B is gone now, Look at this, all right? Your A, if you try to make A the subject by putting this down, your A is literally this. Agree? One more time. It looks a bit messy. So if B is gone, this one, let me just carry forward here. This one, if I make A the subject, sorry, okay? A the subject is going to be X over X minus 2. Can you see that? Huh? And this x over x minus 2, surprise, surprise, it's just here. When you cover this up. Alright, so, so basically you make b disappear by putting x equal to 1, and then what you do is you put your x equal to 1 inside, which is just a red part, and that's how you calculate for a. Okay? Which is why you cover this up, and then you find a. Okay, and of course to do the same, you do uh, for B, like I told you earlier on, I mean we can do it here uh, since we have everything in, in, in on the same screen. So you can see what happens uh, when you are trying to find B. So when you are trying to find B, you try to make A disappear, am I right? How to make A disappear? Well, you substitute X equal to 2. So when you substitute X equal to 2, B, the A will disappear and your B actually look like this. Understand? So, once you understand this, then this mysterious part of it, you go like, hey, actually, uh, you are doing the same thing as before. It's just that you don't show the workings in between. Okay? You are still putting the same thing with x equal to 1, right? B disappear. Because when you flatten it, you can see how B actually disappear. If you don't flatten it like this, you can't tell why B would disappear. Right? Now you know, right? Because it's actually making B disappear. So, so the, the, the so-called magical feel is now gone. It's like, oh, I know how it works already. Uh, just look at the denominator, yeah, because this one will be there anyway later, right? Yeah, something like that. Are we all clear? 
Okay? So this is how it works. This is the working mechanism behind. If you want to use it, I strongly encourage you to understand. Okay, why? Because there are some things that uh, doesn't work very well. So for example, repeated linear factor. Okay? So the cover up rule works well for fractions with distinct linear factors. Okay, so distinct linear factors like like this. Very easy, very different, okay? So what about if you have repeated factors? Now let's investigate a bit, okay? So when you have repeated factors like this one, all right, you split them into three, and then you flatten them, it looks like this, okay? So if you think about it, uh, how your cover-up rule actually works is this, right? If I want to find A, I need to make B and C disappear. And how do I make B and C disappear? Well, I substitute X equal to one, correct? And when X equal to one and B, dis B and C disappear, my A is actually just this portion, and I cover this. Make sense? Right? It, it will work. Not that it doesn't work. The cover rule still works, okay? So, similarly, if you want to find C, you will try to make B and A disappear. How to make B and A disappear? Well, we substitute X equal to 2. So, when you substitute X equal to 2, the A and C will disappear, A and B will disappear, and then your C will actually look like this. Again, you cover up this one. Now, you notice that your cover rule works very well for A and for C but it will not work for B. For the simple reason that if you put 1, B disappear. You put 2, B still disappear. So cover rule doesn't work for the one in between. It works for the one that has got no repeated factor. It works for the one with the square, or at least the highest power. Okay? So, so if you want to use a cover rule, you have to learn it well, so that at least uh, when you are trying to do it yourself, uh, you know what are the restrictions. So for this particular question, let me show you. X minus 1, X minus 2. Okay, how, how do you uh, do it using your cover rule? Okay, so we have A over this. You have B over that. You have C over this one. So the understanding is that you already knew that it works for A, it works for C, but not this one. Okay, it works for the one that's repeated. So if you want to apply a cover rule to find A, you put in X equal to 1 here. This one cover, la, of course. Uh. Let me just put it a bit more drama, okay? Yep. So we cover this one. So minus 1, sorry, 1. 1 minus 2 is minus 1. Minus 1 square. A is 1. And so that's, that's the beauty of cover rule. That's why you want to spend a bit of time to learn this because it's faster. Okay? How about finding C? Let's try. Substitute x equal to what? Come on. What number you put in? x equal to? 2. Okay, look at the denominator. Alright, make it into 0, right? So put x equal to 2 where? Put here. Alright, put on the left. So you're going to get 2 over 2 minus 1, 1. And of course, this one is going to give you 0 you cover. That's your C. You follow? Don't do it for B. Because it will appear to be the same as C all the time. Doesn't make sense. All right, so you must understand, be super clear that cover-up rule does not work for B. Okay, then how to find B, right, Mr. Ang? You've got three unknowns, you found two. Then how now, brown cow, right? Okay, relax. You do the same like you already knew. Meaning to say, you flatten it. So you flatten it, you, you will get A, X minus 2. You've got B, X minus, sorry, this is a square. Uh, X minus 1, and then you've got C, X minus 1. And guess what? You already found your A and C, to be honest, right? So let's just update. A is 1, C is 2. And find B. Can't be that hard. Last unknown is always the easiest. Okay? Put in X equal to 0 if you like. Put in X equal to 10 if you like. Put in X equal to 1 million if you like. Doesn't matter. You can find B. Understand? Okay? So cover rule still works in a way that it actually allows you to do things a bit faster. Out of the three unknown, you can do two that's fast. Why not? Okay? Alright. So, highlighted there, cover rule only works for the finding value of A and C, but will not work for B, so pay attention to that. Okay, so this is basically what I just showed you earlier on. Okay? Now, how about the last case, which is what we call involving a non-factorizable quadratic factor like this? Okay, so again, if you run through the thinking process, Okay, so you do the split, it becomes like this, and if you flatten it, it becomes like that. Think again. Now, cover rule works by 
eliminating the rest, right? So if you think about it, if, if I want to find A, I need to make B and C disappear. How do I make B and C disappear? I put X equal to 1. And when X is equal to 1, this is gone. My A is really just this portion. Again, I cover up this one. So it works because this is a linear factor, a very easy one. Okay, it works. But what won't work is finding B and C. Because if you want to find B or C, you must understand that there's no way of you making A disappear. No way. Because this x squared plus 1 will never be 0. Agree? So you cannot say, I put in a number, A disappear. No, you can't. Okay, so basically, for this kind where it involves this x squared plus 1, it's just troublesome. All right, even with cover up rule, it only helps you with this finding of A. It will not help you with finding B and C. Okay, so let me demonstrate one more time. All right, x, uh, x squared plus 1, x minus 1. Okay, make sure I don't copy the wrong question. All right, so we have uh, x over x minus 1, x squared plus 1. Okay? Okay, good. All right, so again, when we do the split, this is bx plus c because it's non factorizable quadratic. Agree? So find a, a will work, uh, cover up rule because this, this is what cover up rule is all meant for. So I'm going to substitute x equal to 1, all right, into the left hand side, and I get my a. So it's 1 over 2. That's my a. Done. Okay? Okay. So that's what I meant by easy number, you can actually do it really fast. They're done with A, but B and C cannot, huh? so don't even bother trying. So B and C, you have no choice but you do the normal way, which is to flatten. And then, but you already found what's A, right? So A is half. Yep, and then you solve this yourself. At least you got one done fairly quickly. Understand what I'm talking about? All right, so cover up rule is a shortcut, so if you want to use it, uh, you have to learn it well. All right. So uh, I hope you have a better or clearer understanding of it. All right. So this is the summary of things. You it works with only linear denominators. So the denominator that has got x minus one or as long as it's x power one, x squared cannot already. Okay. So linear denominators. Okay. It works with the one with the highest power of the repeated factor. That means to say usually square, right? For our syllabus, it's just square. So it works with the one with the square, the highest power that one. Okay, the in between, nah, it won't work. All right, it does not work with non-factorizable quadratic denominator. So the one that we talk about, the bx plus c, you are quite dead. You guys do it normally anyway. Get the idea? Okay, good.